Hey guys, and welcome to the Living Trees YouTube channel. Keep looking at myself because I can see myself above the camera. Let's try that again. Caroline and welcome to the Living Trees YouTube channel. This has been a long time coming. I've been wanting to do a YouTube channel forever and could never decide what to do it on and it wasn't until last year when I went to a fibromyalgia conference in Utah. If you don't know what fibromyalgia is, I will explain it later on in the video. And it was there that I kind of decided that using fibromyalgia as a platform is like a great way to utilize YouTube because I can get a message across but then I thought Hey, don't limit yourself to just helping people with fibromyalgia. Why don't we just help everybody? So the name The Living Tree is actually a play on the children's book The Giving Tree, which if you haven't read the book, you totally should. But just like a quick synopsis is that there's a boy and a tree, and basically the tree just loves to give, and it's a story about selfless love and basically just caring and giving for others. And that's basically a big part of my life. I... I have to care for myself, but it's so important for me to be able to care for others and make sure people are happy and it's being a people pleaser, I guess, but it just brings me so much joy to make sure that people are taken care of and that they're happy and healthy. So that's where the name The Living Tree came from. So a little bit of backstory on how this YouTube channel came to be. When I was 16, I started feeling some leg pain that was on and off and it was really random and it didn't make any sense so I just kind of brushed it off. Then it started to spread to my arms and then it was all over body pain and it was like the worst time to start having these problems because I was a sophomore in high school, I was active in drama club, spirit club, I did volleyball, I hung out with my friends all the time and it was just the worst time to have it because you're in the prime of your life, you just want to go out and adventure basically and I wasn't able to do that. I, I, I hung back at my house a lot. Um, I came a little bit more reserved, which is really not normal for me because I'm very outgoing. Um, but because of that, and I wanted to be the outgoing me that I know, I kind of pushed the pain aside and just ignored it until I was about 18 or 19 years old when I was a freshman in college. I actually went to a rheumatologist and was officially diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is a chronic pain condition where you have chronic consistent pain all over your body. It can have its days. You can have a great day and you don't feel any pain and you try to get all your housework done, your homework, wash the car, go for a jog, and then that next day you're in bed all day. You can't even get up to get a glass of water. You're bedridden basically. So it's a very hard condition to live with also because you can't see it. You look at me and I am a healthy 22 year old, inside my body is screaming, basically. And like I said, it's day to day, but it's pretty much non-stop, depends on what I'm doing that day. Um, and so when I was officially diagnosed, I told the rheumatologist that I wanted to treat this as holistically as possible. I didn't want any medication. I was too young, I didn't want to be on that kind of medication yet if at all. So she didn't really listen to my wishes which made me really upset because doctors are supposed to be there not only to be able to diagnose you with things but to be able to be a support system and have knowledge and help you out in that way. So that really upset me and that was when I kind of just went off on my own and did as much research as possible as to what treatments you could do, what herbal supplements you could take to try to help the pain. And that's where I'm at now. I'm still in a big experimental phase of doing a bunch of different things. And you have to see, you have to take it day to day. It's definitely a day to day condition. With fibromyalgia, you can also have a big giant clump of other medical issues. Myself, I have in conjunction with fibromyalgia, I have arthritis, Raynaud's disease, irritable bowel syndrome, gastroesophageal reflux disease, Barrett's esophagus, anxiety, and depression. 
Another thing that is really obnoxious that comes with fibromyalgia is what we like to call fibro fog. Fibro fog basically means that because of your fibromyalgia, something just goes on in your brain and I guess you have brain farts a lot more often than not. So I could be thinking of a word I'm trying to say. It could be the word chair, and I cannot think of the actual word, but I could describe to you what I'm talking about. So if I was trying to say the word chair, I would probably be like, you know, the thing has legs and you can sit on it, and then someone else would hopefully catch on and help me out with the word. But luckily I have good friends that will help me out that way. Because there is no, to this date, an actual test that can tell you boom, you have fibromyalgia. They are working on blood tests, which would be a huge monumental moment in fibromyalgia history, I guess. Um, but for now, there's real no, there's no real diagnosis and there's no real cure. So in October of 2014, I decided to apply for the National Fibromyalgia and Chronic Pain Association Conference, which was being held in Salt Lake City, Utah. So when I got accepted, I was so thrilled. I was so excited to travel to Salt Lake. I'd never been, so I went with my grandma. We had a super fun time traveling, and the conference changed my life. I learned that there are other people living with what I have. I don't have to feel like an outcast or an outsider. I learned so many things about being an advocate for this invisible illness because you can't see it so you have to really educate people on what you're feeling or they will not know. You'll just keep living life and people will have no clue what's wrong with you unless you take an hour to explain it. And while I was at the conference I had an idea for a blog at first and I was trying to come up with a clever name for it and I finally came up with The Living Tree. And so when I got home, I started to write this blog. I was writing it for probably like three or four months. And I love to write, but on a very selective basis. I much more prefer being able to sit in front of the camera and be able to talk to you guys about whatever topic I'm gonna to talk about that day and I think it gets the message across for me a lot better. So this is how the YouTube channel has started and I tried to start it last year and stuff just did not work out but we're here now, I'm finally doing it and I say better late than never. So this channel will have basically just a little bit of everything. It'll have some health and beauty tips, organization skills, life hacks, DIYs, recipes. Basically, I just want every video to be helpful and to send a positive, uplifting message to everyone that is watching. So I'm going to try at least once a month to have a fibromyalgia-centered video. I want my other videos to be for everyone, little tips that will help anybody and everybody just live a happier healthier life but I do want to take a video a month to be able to dedicate it just to people with fibromyalgia because I can hone in on specific tips and tricks and advice that will really help the people living with fibromyalgia thank you guys so much for watching this video if you liked it be sure to give it a thumbs up and in the description box below I'll be sure to link the Living Trees Facebook Twitter and Pinterest page so make sure you guys check those out and I'll see you next week bye friends